Hey guys, welcome back to Ebtide Tackle Talk. It's been a long time since we've done a tutorial. Um, I've been a bit slack with that. I've been doing a lot of fishing. So a lot of the video clips that we've been doing have been actual action related. But um, we're back on the bandwagon and we'll be pumping out some tutorials um, a little bit more regularly now. Notice our new backdrop. We've gone all professional and uh, got ourselves a banner. It's better than looking at the holes in uh, my wall. Anyway, we're beginning, we're gonna kick things off with a very, very simple loop knot. We posted a photo on Instagram the other day just showing a few lures rigged up, ready to go fishing. And there were a few comments about the loop knot, show us how to do it. Um, I thought, there's a million tutorials out there on different loop knots, and I don't know if this one's been covered before. It probably has by another name, um, but I haven't seen it. It's a loop knot that was shown me at No Boundaries Oman at a reef freighters a few years ago by Andre Van Wyck, um, Dre or Neptuna as he's known on Instagram. Legend of a fly fisherman and topwater guy. And he showed me this loop knot and I've used it ever since. It's so simple and easy to tie. It was shown to him by the, uh, the brains behind FCL Labo, uh, Surasaki San. And um, he showed Dre again at No Boundaries on uh, I think the very first Reef Raiders that ever was. Um, so the full credits go to Surasaki San and then to Andre who showed me. Um, I call it the Dre knot because Andre. Um, so, let's get into it. Hmm. So why use a loop knot I think is probably worth discussing first and foremost. I use a loop knot in um, nearly every lure that I throw that is under probably 60, 70 grams would be about my uh, point where I stop trying tying a loop knot. Um, I do like using a split ring and a swivel with my bigger lures, with my big kingfish lures, with my GT lures. But I find in smaller lures that extra bit of weight on the front of the lure actually isn't your friend. And I prefer to use just a loop knot in those circumstances so there's no added weight. The lure is free to dart and respond any way it wants and it's not restricted by the knot. Um, it's not restricted by weight and it's not restricted by, say, a uni knot tied on hard, potentially restricting its movement ever so slightly. Um, it's awesome for lures that you twitch, um, allowing them to, to dart one way and settle before you, you dart them back the other. Um, I think you get more action out of a lure with a loop knot than you do if you tie a uni down to it. So that's why. Let's get down to showing. Let's get down to showing you how to do it. So straight up, this is hard to show you with a camera that's gonna to wanna to focus on me. I start off by tying a simple overhand loop in the mono or fluorocarbon. I use this up to about say 80 pound, either in fluoro or mono. Any more than that, I think you're pushing it. You could perhaps push it a little bit, that's about it. Okay, so you got an overhand loop. That gets threaded the tag in through the toe point on your lure, like so. The tag end goes back through that loop, like so. We see that there. And you can make that loop as big or as small as you like. I like them relatively small. Okay, next thing is we take our tag end and we simply thread it back down the main line three times. Let me show you. 
one, two, three, We cinch the two up together by pulling basically on the main line and pulling on the tag end at the same time. And we get this kind of loose effect. Then we pull it up the rest of the way, pulling on both. Ending with a finish of just putting that tag end off first. Any up the finish like this. Very, very hard to show. Anyway, I'll try and do that from above now. <laughs> 